Welcome to the Mindful Living Podcast. My name is Stephanie catalano Robilio, and I'm your host. I'm also a licensed clinical social worker, personal development author, public speaker, and wellness expert. My intention is to provide education and knowledge that will help you gain new insight and support your journey of healing, recovery, and wellness. If you're wondering how to break old patterns and create a life of wellness in mind, body, and spirit, stay connected. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mindful Living Podcast. This is episode 38 and I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Today I am going to be talking about how to stop fear and anxiety dead in its tracks. I feel led to talk about fear and anxiety because the truth is, I'm sure if we were all together right now and I said by a show of hands, raise your hand, if you have or are struggling with fear and anxiety, most people, if not all people, would raise their hand myself included. From my personal experience, fear and anxiety is something that I've struggled with for many, many, many years. And here and there, I still do. I just have a way better understanding of it now. But also for my professional experience, I don't know that I've ever had a client who was not struggling with fear and anxiety. And so before we dive into some tips and tricks on how to stop fear and anxiety, I feel really led to actually break down what fear and anxiety is to me and the way I understand it. So, you know, the reason for that is most people say I have anxiety, myself included. At one point, I identified as a person who had anxiety. In fact, I used to just believe I'm an anxious person. And it wasn't until I learned more about fear and anxiety that I really started to see the difference and started to conclude that most of us, if not all of us, we actually probably aren't really struggling with anxiety, but more so fear. And here's why. So the information I'm going to share with you on fear and anxiety is information that I learned through rapid resolution therapy. This is a brilliant type of therapy created by Dr. John Connolly. And I'm just so, so, so in love with this work. And so He described it in a way that like the light bulb went off in my head and it just seems to be every time I share this with clients, I have an opportunity to work with the light bulb goes off in their head too. So in essence, (coughs) excuse me, how Dr. Connolly shares it is this. So fear, fear has been defined as perceiving threat, right? So fear is perceiving threat and that means sometimes perceiving threat where there is threat And that could also mean perceiving threat where there is no threat. See, so perceiving threat where there is threat, but it can also be perceiving threat where there is no threat. So the difference of that is, let's say you're sitting there and all of a sudden, a big scary pit bull broke down the door and ran into your office space. Well, that's that's a threat, right? And then it would make sense that you're going to have some type of reaction or response to the actual threat that's present the pit bull dog. So that would make sense that you would start to feel your body change and you would probably feel a sense of nervousness and the shift in your overall physical body because there's there's a, a scary dog right there. So your body's preparing to run away, which is flight, um, possibly fight if you're brave, right? Or freeze. And we'll get into the fawn part, the people pleasing in a different scenario. But most people's responses are either to fight, flight, or freeze, especially when there's something like a big scary dog that's right there, right? Because it's an actual threat. On the other hand, let's say that that happened where once upon a time, a big scary dog barged down and you have had that experience in your past. And now here we are, fast forward six months to a year, And you're getting ready to, let's say, go into the same office where that once happened. But this time, you know there's no dog there, but it's the same office, the same environment. Just by thought alone, right, or just by memory alone, you can begin to perceive that office to be a threat. Now, is it actually a threat? Probably not in the present moment, unless, of course, there's another dog or something else scaring in the office. But the office itself is not a threat. However, because you've had that prior experience, the body remembers that information. And because the body is so smart, it remembers now when you're there of that old thing that happened then. 
So this is really, 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 really fascinating information because most people, we are going through life seeing threat where there actually is no threat. And that's a result of most often unresolved trauma from our past. And so part of, part of the work when it comes to healing and recovery and just being able to move forward from your past is really developing that awareness to be able to identify what happened versus what is happening, right? So what happened is the past, what happening is now, and what could happen, well, we don't need to go there because it's the future, right? So developing that awareness to really train your brain and body to be here in the now, the present moment, to stay focused on what's actually happening. And if not, most people will go through life always seeing threat where there is no threat. Now you can imagine if somebody's living in a constant state of threat, then you could see how that could interrupt the relationship with themselves, their loved ones, whether it's family, friends, partner, girlfriend, husband, wife, children. It could potentially get in the way of opportunity at work. It could disrupt their day-to-day -day functioning. Things as simple as just being able to show up to work on time and show up you know, at peace and calm or their ability to drive in traffic and, and stay calm and collected, right? And you know that's because if the body is deeming people, places, and things in the outside world to be threat, then the body is going to constantly keep you in a place of wanting to keep you safe. And we do that by our trauma responses, which I've talked about. I think I just talked about them on maybe the last episode or some other recent time, which is fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And so the difference between <clears throat> fear and anxiety, a lot of times people think what they're experiencing is anxiety, but it's actually fear. The way I understand anxiety is anxiety is when the mind misreads the body's response to fear. I'm gonna say that again, because it's pretty big. Anxiety is when the mind misreads the body's response to fear. So in other words, when we are in a state of threat, real or not real, the body begins to create a certain response. Hormones are released, right? Chem there's a change in, in chemical. Different systems shut off so other systems can go on. So for example, if a person's in threat, right, they probably aren't going to be worried about what's for dinner tonight. <laughs> you know, like they're not so worried about what's for dinner. So the digestive system is actually going to rest. So then automatically the circulatory system and the respiratory system, those are activated. Why? Because if there's really a threat and I need to keep myself safe, well, what's for dinner is quite irrelevant, but my blood flow, I need that to be up. I need my legs to be able to run quickly and my heart to follow. And I'm also gonna need my respiratory, right? So my ability to breathe and go. So circula circulatory system up, respiratory system up, digestive system down when in threat, real or not real. Now, when I say anxiety is when the mind misreads the body's response to fear, well, let me break that down for you. The body's response to fear is exactly what I just said. Digestive system goes down, other systems go up. So you might begin to notice your heart starts to beat faster. Maybe you start to feel hot, like temperature hot. Maybe your cheeks even turn red. Maybe your palms start to sweat. Maybe you start to feel like, I would use the word jittery in your body or edgy, you know, uncomfortable in your body. Well, that's because your body's preparing you for safety, right? It's going to fight, flight, freeze. It's going to get out of threat's way. And so anxiety happens when the mind, let's focus on a fast heartbeat, when the mind misreads that. So if here I am, preparing to get away from this scary scene with this dog that's in my office, right? Even though I would probably freeze. I'm not, I'm not really much of a fighter. I'd probably just freeze or, or try to get out of there and fl flight. Um, but if my mind starts to misread my body's response with a fast heart by thinking something like, oh my goodness, am I going to have a heart attack? Oh my goodness, why is my heart beating so fast? Is there something wrong with me? Am I going to drop dead? Right? If I start to have a narrative around why my heart is beating fast, that is anxiety, right? That's the way I understand it, thanks to Dr. John Connolly. That is anxiety. So 
The reason this information can be so life-changing is because if you all feel led, take a moment to really look at the times in your life when you have said you feel anxious. Maybe it's in work meetings. Maybe it's when you're going on a date. Maybe it's when you're going to a 12-step meeting. Maybe it's when you're just showing up for work. Maybe it's when you have to call your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your child, whoever, right? Take an honest moment and identify when are the times that you felt you were feeling anxiety. And then let's peel that a little bit deeper. Knowing the information I just shared with you, I would invite you guys to actually think about the fact, was it anxiety or were you perceiving threat, which would be fear? Were you perceiving threat? So let's use the example of going into a work meeting. Let's say you go into a work meeting and you're, you know, you're nervous about it. You don't know if your boss is going to call on you and you don't feel confident about, you know, maybe a deadline that you're working on. Even if it's subconsciously, it's probably likely that you're deeming that scenario to be a threat. Why? Because I don't know, most of us experience thoughts like, well, what if I don't sound smart enough? Or what if I sound stupid? Or what if she thinks my you know, my response to this isn't, isn't smart or it sounds dumb or maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't deserve this job, right? Like all that chatter that happens as a result of fear, that's typically what gets in the way. And then because we're deeming that moment of being in a meeting where we might sound stupid, a fearful moment, the body starts to respond in accordance to fear, which is to keep us safe, right? So to keep us safe, it's gonna do what it needs to do. So heart rate might go fast. And, th and those things that I mentioned earlier, that does not mean you're having an, an anxiety attack. That doesn't have anything necessarily to do with anxiety. That is your body doing what it's been designed to do. That is what the body is doing to keep you safe. Now, if you're in that meeting, and you're worried your boss is going to call on you and now your heart starts to beat fast and now you start to have some narrative about your heart like i'm going to have a heart attack in this meeting and you can't stop focusing on that then that would be anxiety that would be anxiety so i really really hope this makes sense as always you know feel free to reach out in the show notes i leave all my contact information so you can email me or you can always find me on social media and feel free to shoot me a DM. The, this is a lot of information and for most people, this is new information. The truth is I never understood fear and anxiety to be as I'm describing it now up until I think it was early 2020 when I learned this new information and it really shifted for me because for so long, I just thought that I was always an anxious person. But when I took an honest look at myself and I peeled back, you know, my, the, 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 the onion, as they say, I really concluded that everything for the most part that I experience in my life then, and even sometimes now it's really fear driven. You know, it's, it's the fear of failure. It's the fear of not being good enough. It's the fear of being left behind, the fear of rejection, the fear of, you know, wanting to, to, to be approved and, you know, pe the fear of people not liking me, you know, all that stuff that I think most of us, one way or the other, one way or the other, we can agree that, you know, we, I think I, I've said this many, many times on other podcasts and even in person and with clients that ultimately we just want to be seen, heard and loved, seen, heard and loved. So anytime we deem someone, something or some place to be threatening, then naturally the body starts to produce a fear response. And so Again, it goes back to having the awareness and really understanding how your body has been created and what it's designed to do. And the reason this is so powerful is because when you understand the difference between fear and anxiety and when you understand the, the response of your body and the way your body works, well, that's how you're going to be able to stop anxiety and fear dead in its tracks. Why? Because you're going to see it coming. And when your mind tries to play tricks on you, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to identify, whoa, 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 not today, mind and body. I'm smart enough. I'm wise enough to know the difference between fear and anxiety. And I have the insight to be able to, not only the insight, but the intelligence to be able to teach my body right here, right now, that there is nothing to fear, right? There's nothing to fear. There is no actual threat. 
It's very different if there is a real threat, but more often than not, people are going through life living in a constant state of fear and there is no threat. That doesn't mean that there won't be threat. Life happens, right? There's car accidents, people die. I guess it's true that we might end up, you know, crossing paths with a big scary pit bull who got off the leash. You know, yes, can these things happen? Absolutely, absolutely. But they're not happening every moment of every day. And I strongly believe that we as humans, we deserve to wake up feeling good. And if we wake up and we're not feeling good, then we at least have the, have the right to apply coping skills and kind of work towards getting us to a place of feeling good or feeling better. I used to live many, 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 many years in a constant state of fear, stress, and survival, and I do not miss it at all. There's nothing fun about it. Even the moments now when I start to get stuck in my fear-based thinking and then I feel out of sorts in my body, it's not a good feeling. It's like you just wanna be able to shake it off and move forward. But the point I really want to highlight with you all is understanding the difference between fear and anxiety, which we covered, and stressing that when I say learning how to stop fear and anxiety in its tracks, it comes down to awareness. It's This isn't like, oh, I'm some magician that's going to be able to abracadabra, boom, it's gone, right? No, that's not necessarily realistic. But it's about keeping it simpler than we tend to make things. In, in general, we as humans, we tend to overcomplicate everything. But this is about learning how to slow down, right? Give yourself to slow down. Take a look at what are the things that you once thought were causing you anxiety, now, knowing this new information, go a little deeper. Do you think it's actually anxiety or was it fear, right? Were you perceiving a person, a place, a situation or something to be a threat, right? And if so, then try to make sense of what you were feeling in that moment, knowing it actually does make sense. It makes perfect sense that the body's going to respond in a way that can feel uncomfortable if we're thinking there's a threat in the room, right? We're not gonna be sitting here feeling all calm, centered, and at peace if the body's deeming there to be a threat. So take time to do that. I think that that's a little exercise and assignment that can be really helpful. And then just some other small small little tips is, is just remembering the power of our breath. You know, it's just amazing to me that we've been given every single thing that we need. We have access to it at our fingertips. It's all in our body. It's through our breath. It's through our senses. It's through, the, through our mind, our imagination, our focus, but we sometimes misuse it and we tend to be the person who gets in our own way and we tend to create so much unnecessary fear and other unpleasant emotions. So don't forget that when you're struggling and you're feeling maybe fearful or you're seeing threat and you're, you're, you're having some type of response to that and you're wanting to calm yourself down, Use your breath. I cannot stress enough. You know, I just said this today um, on, a, on a little, another moment I was having where we were talking about mindfulness and mental health. And I said, you know, I, I one time read on social media and I just love it. Somebody wrote, every time we deliberately take a breath, it's like giving your body a little love note. And I just think that's so beautiful because it's so easy, right? I mean, no matter, you could be in the car, you could be in a meeting, you could be at home, you could be in the grocery store. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're ever feeling like you're not safe in your body and you're feeling out of sorts, just take a moment to notice where you are, connect to your breath, breathe in and out. It doesn't have to be for long, three to five times, right? All the way in, all the way out. You do that three to five times and I guarantee that you will begin to notice little subtle shift, shifts within you. And then like anything else, the more consistent you stay with some of these small practices along with ongoing awareness, that's what leads to the bigger outcome. So utilizing your breath, cause it's right there at your fingertips, utilizing your senses, right? Every time we start to see or feel threat, it's typically because we have left the present moment, right? We left the present moment. So use your senses to refocus on the present moment. And that could look something like taking a moment to just notice, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you taste? What do you smell? And take time really focusing on that until you actually recenter and reground yourself in the now, in the present moment. That's super, super helpful. So breath work, 
connecting to your senses. And as they say, be where your feet are, do your best to just stay focused on what's actually happening in the present time. Understanding the past is the past. We can never get it back. The future is not here. So it serves absolutely no point to worry and stress about it. And the power is truly in the now. Each and every one of you, as always, thank you for tuning in. You should be so proud of yourself for taking the time to have this moment. Hopefully it's filling your cup up, just a little bit of you know, information and education that can really create a change within your day-to-day -day experiences. So I hope that you found this helpful. And I kindly ask that if, if, if this resonated with you, please leave me a review or reach out to me. I would love to hear your feedback, any questions you have. But as somebody who is recovering from trauma and all the responses I've learned along the way, I really, 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 really believe that each and every one of us, we deserve to experience a life of peace. We deserve to feel safe in our bodies. We deserve to show up feeling good and, and having confidence and not feeling like we're always on edge or in this constant state of worry. Like there's nothing good about that. And life has so much to offer and the world is absolutely beautiful, but sometimes we miss out on so much because we are stuck in this constant state of fear. And so here's to releasing fear and choosing love, knowing the truth is in love and love is the only truth. I love you guys until next time. Thank you for joining me today. If you found today's episode to be insightful and inspiring, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And I kindly ask that you please leave me a review so together we can help the next person. To learn more about my products and services, check out www.themindfulliving.com and come connect with me on Instagram at mindfulliving.now where I share daily inspiration, mindful skills, tips, and more. Until the next episode, stay mindful and always remember the power that lives inside of you.